Hello and welcome to Fork in Politics. Today we're going to talk about Milo Yiannopoulos. Milo Yiannopoulos. Who is Milo Yiannopoulos? Milo is a US based British journalist that works for Breitbart. He's best known for being a provocateur, um, he's extremely intelligent and he is what you would call an anti-social uh, justice warrior person and he tends to enjoy saying things that get people upset. Um, he was born in Kent in England on the 18th of October 1984 um, and more recently over the last year plus He's been doing the Dangerous Faggot Tour around the United States. He's been visiting lots of uh, campuses and giving speeches. And he's tended to have been invited by the Republican Party groups within the colleges. Um, he's had quite a number of them uh, cancelled, either through the university, uh, springing multi-thousand dollar uh, fee demands on the college Republicans mere days before the uh, meeting or on a couple of occasions there's been violence. So in December 2016 Milo announced that he was uh, being given $250,000 advance to write a book and the social justice warriors were mental. They were extremely upset by this and um, tried to pressurise the publishers into not allowing the book to go forward. And so, so fantastic was the response that it, it jettisoned Armilo up to the number one in a number of best bookseller lists. So Milo was meant to do his finale. Uh, of the Dangerous Faggot tour and he was then going to go off into hiding to um, do nothing but write this book and that's where our story starts today. On the 1st of February Milo's uh, finale was meant to be at the University College in Berkeley, a prestigious university and during the 1960s there were a number of riots because of the free speech movement. And I, I suspect but don't know that that's the reason why Milo chose uh, Berkeley to be his final stop on what has been at times a sensational tour. And predominantly the biggest thing that's come out of it is the fact that the regressive left, the the social justice warriors, they cannot cope with a gay man having the wrong opinion. And they've got really, really triggered over it. And they've got really angry and Black Lives Matter have got very angry. And it's it's been amusing uh, to watch Americans, the home of free speech, and um, for Americans to be rioting on university campuses to stop free speech has been the biggest thing that's come out of this. So Milo was going to do one big finale. Um, it was going to be one of his best uh, lectures ever. It was probably going to be very well attended. And unfortunately, the regressive left decided that they wanted a riot instead. So opposed to free speech are the regressive left. So opposed to people having freedom of thought and the, the ability to have their own opinions. So upsetting is that that they literally tore the place down. They went on riots. Um, this is what Myla said to Tucker Carson in his uh, interview just after it happened. Violent riots last night at the University of California at Berkeley. You watched them break out live on this show last evening. The man who made that campus tremble joins us tonight in the studio for his first interview following the outbreak of violence. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Few people are hated more 
by the left than Milo Yiannopoulos, the gay Jewish immigrant who's become the face of the red-pilled right. Evidence of that was on full display last night at Berkeley, where Milo was scheduled to speak, but was evacuated shortly before the speech for his own safety. Watch what happened. America last night. Great by editor Milo Yiannopoulos joins us for his first interview since we spoke with him by phone last night. Milo, thanks for joining us. Thank you. So here's the reason I want to talk to you. It's not to endorse your views, many of which I agree with, some of which I don't. Yeah. But the point is, you tried to express your views and were prevented by a violent mob. So if you were an anarchist or a Scientologist or a flat earth activist, it wouldn't matter. No. You were not allowed to exercise your First Amendment rights, and, and that's shocking. Give us first a quick recap of what happened last night to you? Well, I think I, I agree with you um, in the first place. I mean, I, I'm not any of the things that these posters characterize me as in, a, in a, an effort to legitimize the violence. But even if I were, I don't think it would matter exactly. for the reasons you say. Um, so I, w I went in uh, to do my talk. We go in a couple of hours before to set up our tech and for me to, you know, put on a costume or something. I had a wonderful outfit plan, which is the main reason I'm upset about yesterday. Um, I was going to go as a native. Oh, I was going to talk about cultural appropriation in full Native American headdress. I had a full custom headdress with my name embroidered on it. I'm so mad that I didn't get to wear that. Anyway, we went in for like an hour or two beforehand, we were planning it and suddenly there were these explosions outside. There were firecrackers and rocks being hurled at the building. The police were having things hurled at them. Um, and we, I was evacuated up to the fifth floor like by the fire escape. It was all very exciting. Um, and then suddenly you know, I, was being, I was being taken out of the building. I was informed that, that I was being evacuated uh, because there were hundreds of protesters outside blowing things up, hurling things at the police. The police weren't, didn't seem to me to be doing very much aside from hiding inside the building. The ground floor had been stormed. So we had to rush down to the, uh, the, 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 the parking lot, um, find one car, and that exit was blocked, so we, run to, we ran to another car, and we finally got in one, and I was, you know, bundled in, put in a bulletproof vest, and whisked away. And, and this is um, a, a few of the pictures of the regressive left, these awful social, social justice warriors that, um, if they don't get their own way, start having tantrums. Well, that's what they did because they didn't like Milo having a free speech. So, this is what they did. Milo's tour is now at an end. Uh, Milo's going to go away and write his book and they don't need to think of him for the next however long before he comes out of hibernation. The problem that they've got is they have created a chapter on its own for his book. A chapter on, his, on its own. Um, and people will buy it just to read that chapter about UC Berkeley and the social justice warriors that are opposed to free speech. So you've not only propelled Milo into even bigger stardom than he had before, you've actively put money in his back pocket through book sales. And not only have you given him extra money through book sales, his Twitter account, went from, on average, uh, 500 to 1,500 new subscribers a day. Um, that's now at 17,000. So between 13 and 17,000 new subscribers every day, you have literally put money in Milo Yiannopoulos' 
back pocket. And I tell you, I could not be happier over that, you absolute muppets. So this is where I see things at the moment. We've got Trump, who everybody said would never ever in a million years get the nomination as the Republican candidate. Then they said there's no way in a million years he will get elected. Then they said there's no way in a million years he'll get inaugurated. And here we are, we still have Trump in office doing exactly what he said he would do. And again, the social justice warriors and the lefties are going absolutely crazy. And we're going to see Milo, he is going to get even more famous and more famous and the book will come out and the social justice warriors will go mental. But they are the ones that are causing him to be this famous. You are the reasons why he's constantly in the news. You can call him every name you want. But the fact is he will keep getting more and more famous as a direct consequence of you. And that absolutely delights me. And then we're going to see over in the UK, UKIP are going to win the Stoke Central uh, by-election on the 23rd of February. Um, we had won Brexit. We've now won uh, the first stage of Brexit legislation going through uh, Parliament. So we will see um, uh, in March, we will see Article 50 being triggered and the UK will start uh, the course to remove ourselves from the European Union in two years time. And um, that that really, really means a lot to me. So if you're watching this and you think that conservatives don't have a voice or alternative uh, people of the right or people like me that are right of centre, that don't particularly like the Tories, but definitely don't like people on the left. You do have a voice and there are people like me, Paul Nuttall and lots and lots of us uh, like Nigel Farage that will speak for you. And if you go out and vote, if you put your cross next to the name of people like me, you will get represented on your local councils. You will get represented in Parliament, we just need you to go out and vote. And if you look at what's happened in America and you look at what's happening right now in the UK and you look at what happened with Brexit, that we definitely couldn't win. Definitely you could not win Brexit, but we did. So just take all of this and remember, your vote actually does count. Thank you.